So Annalise Michelle had 67 exorcisms. 67. And she, in my understanding was she was a devout <clears throat> Catholic before she became possessed, if you will. Uh, went to church every Sunday, prayed all the time. I believe her knees broke or suffered serious injury because she was praying so often. She had epilepsy. She had a seizure when she was 16 and went into psychosis. So my question to you would be, now, there's a very key point in there where I think, I believe, I've heard you say that people will start to speak Latin, like classic Latin that nobody today speaks. Mm. She doesn't, at least not on camera. Perhaps it was, she did, it just wasn't recorded. How much of this could actually just be attributed to her psychosis or schizophrenia or epilepsy or what have you? Like, my problem is, is I, I do believe, but I'm a skeptic, but like people equate this to aliens. And you mm -hmm. could almost make the case that aliens have more traction than <laughs> demonic possession, especially today. So, like, what – obviously, it's just a belief, but, like, why is this real? Why is this just not epilepsy or schizophrenia? Well, there are a couple of comments I was going to make. You know, the church has clear teaching on the reality that evil is personified. But a lot of the things that we witness, there isn't any clear teaching on that. So, like, is she possessed by Nero? Is she possessed by Judas? That would raise the question, can the souls of the damned possess people? And so was that really Judas? Was that really Nero or where Hitler or whatever? Or were they demons who were mimicking those personalities as a way to feed into the audience, if you will? Because the gun, the, the, the goal of any demon would be to sow confusion, confusion, to really just make things really hard to understand and comprehend. And watching this, that's exactly what would happen. Yeah. Um, I want to go back to the what's the motivation here. I'm 0% questioning your motivation. However, I am questioning the motivation of the Catholic Church. <laughs> Not sure if you've heard the news. Catholic Church hasn't exactly have a great reputation these days. The movie uh, Spotlight, all that stuff. Sure. I'm not talking about the kids and all. We won't go there. But, I mean, if we do, whatever. But not exactly the best reputation these days. But I'm talk you're talking about motivation and incentives. Maybe, uh, you know, if the church kind of promotes demons, if there's no demons, maybe there's no devil. And if there's no devil, maybe there's no God. So maybe going down that path, it behooves the church to sort of incentivize that there are, in fact, demons and to go down the path of, well, the demons, the God, the, you know, the devil and all that. So I, I guess my question is from a, you asked about motivation, what, what incentivizes? I'm not saying that it's you, mm -hmm. but there is seems to be an incentive for the church to promote these demons or these exorcisms because you know how would how else would you go towards the path of God, you know, good and bad type of thing if there's no devil? I would say you know it isn't that the church is promoting exorcism, the church is promoting God. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't go out and randomly say to people on the street, "Hey, I think you're possessed. You need an exorcism." So it isn't that I'm going out mm -hmm. and telling people they need an exorcism. It's people that are coming to the church and then out of a ministry of charity the church will look into what they believe to be the case mm -hmm. and then to weigh in on that. Now, ultimately, because the majority of people, as I mentioned, are, have already self-diagnosed, if I tell somebody that I don't believe that they're possessed, guess what? They're going to find somebody out there who's going to agree with them. People will continue to shop around until they get what they want. Yeah, so but you, again, want, you said that you just wanted to become a priest, right? That yeah. was your motivation, right? But that's because really... But that's, core, would, but that's at the core of, of Christianity is, you know, what did Jesus do in his life? You read biblical accounts, and I would suggest that Jesus came to destroy the mm -hmm. devil. But my, and that's my, the work of the church today. My question is, Pat said, why would you want to become an, exor an exorcist? He's like, well, you're like, well, I didn't really want to become an exorcist. I wanted to become a priest. And then you got a phone call one day, I assume, by the church, and they're like, you're up, buddy. We're going to need an exorcist in Indiana, and you're the guy. And I assume you're not going to say no to that. No, so, because as a priest, when you are ordained, you promise obedience to your bishop. And exactly, that's so. my point. So they're going to say, hey, time for you to become the exorcist. You say, all right, I promise obedience, so that's my new job. So it's part of you're it. not going to say no. So like, that's your job now. So now it's your job as an exorcist to go 
do exorcism. So back to my initial point, it's sort of like the church is but even when pushing I have, this upon but even the having, clergyman. But having that role, mm-hmm. it's really up to me to determine how to live that out. It's not that the bishop's calling me every day and saying, hey, I, I expected you to do 10 exorcisms today. <laughs> it really is, even when I got the appointment, it's really up to me to determine how to live out that role. I mean, I could choose to remain anonymous. The bishop who appointed me, he even encouraged me to help educate people mm-hmm. what the church believes and teaches, to, to use it as a, uh, an educative role, if you will. But again, there are some exorcists. You can just kind of stay off in the shadows, and mm-hmm. nobody will even know who you are or what you do. And but the they, church is aware you're out there doing podcasts and putting putting this out there. Sure, okay. but again, and but it's a way to help educate people. And you know, people can agree with me; they can disagree with me; they can agree with the church or disagree. But my goal <laughs> is simply to present, take advantage of opportunities, present what the church believes, what people do with that. It's up to them. I'm not offended or I don't get upset or angry. It's just a matter of saying, this is what the church believes. I throw it out there. What people do with it it ultimately is up to them. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here. 